Hi, it's Richard here from the Siebel Hub. This video accompanies a recent blog post on the Hub concerning toolbar icons in IP2014. As many of you may already know, the toolbar icons that were in IP2013 have been replaced with these single color icons in IP2014. These icons are no longer bitmaps. They are, in fact, characters from a font. But let's investigate a little further. When we review the HTML, we will see that the original icon is still present, but has a size of 0 by 0 pixels, so it does not display. It is nonetheless present if we open it in a tab in the browser. Let's take a closer look at the styling of this element. we can see that the relevant class includes a reference to a pseudo-selector called before, which can include text. And when I remove the content, which is the text, the icon disappears. So where can we get icons in suitable fonts? Well, Fort Awesome, producers of the Font Awesome Zip, is a good place to start. Here we can see a wide variety of icon-based fonts. If we choose one that looks suspiciously like the competition, here we have the Unicode character number that we will use in our content attribute in our CSS styling. Downloading this wonderful font takes just a few seconds. And this zip file contains not just fonts, but also a style sheet. The style sheet, which Alex explained may have to be modified, will need to go in our files custom folder. But what about our fonts? Well, in 2014, there is now a fonts folder. And we can include a custom subfolder, thereby placing the fonts in the custom fonts folder and the style sheet in the custom files folder. You will notice that there are other standard fonts already there, including an Oracle font. The font is delivered in many different formats because different browsers use different kinds of fonts. In any case, once we have placed the style sheet and the fonts into our environment and made the necessary changes to any manifests, we can begin to consider what we could do with something like this. By choosing the right font family and the right Unicode content, we could provide ourselves with a new and exciting icon based on one of these web fonts. We could also change the color, perhaps to something a little more corporate. Once we begin to understand how this works, it becomes very easy to think of lots of different ways to theme your Siebel, because these fonts are everywhere. For example, in the icons on the home page for the calendar. Now, there's no use looking in the Font Awesome font for this one, because this comes from the Oracle font. You can review the contents of the Oracle font by installing it, if necessary, on a PC that has the character map installed, and then opening the character map and reviewing the characters. You will see in the bottom left-hand corner of this window that there is also the Unicode value that we would need. Hmm, this looks like a suitable one for the calendar. I don't know why, but it just reminds me of calendars in general. So I return to my Siebel environment, and let's experiment by using Google Chrome's developer tools to change it on the fly. And let's see what it looks like. Yes, perfect. So I've identified a suitable font icon for my new Siebel theme. That's it. Until next time, Richard saying goodbye.